The design wars are heating up. Everyone's saying that Framer just killed Figma with their new design pages, but I'm here to explore and to talk about my opinion if I think that is true or not. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. The first step is we're gonna take a look at design pages, brand new feature from Framer. We're gonna take a look at what Figma has, why Framer decided to do this, give a little bit of context, and then we're gonna go into workflow output quality and my final verdict. And at the end, I'm also gonna give you guys a freebie for when to actually use what tool. So stay tuned for that. So this is Framer. Of course, when we log into Framer, we have this canvas here, which allows us to drag it around and we can design outside the box here if we want to, but that is not what we're talking about today. Today, we're talking about this new page here, the design page. So the brand new thing that we have here is called design pages. We now have a section before your actual design development pages where you can just have a free design canvas. Now this comes with all the typical sharing of files that you have with teams. You can add in vectors if you want in so we can explore as many different file explorations and different canvases and stuff. So we can go ahead and just, for example, here we can just duplicate this and we can, I don't know, here I'm going to take a look at what it could look like for mobile and you get what I mean. You can just go as far and wide as you want to, just like you would inside of Figma, for example. Here, this is Figma. So this is the default of Figma. This is what it was when it first launched a couple years ago. And if you see here, this is my own Figma thumbnail file. So you can see that I use Figma a lot for this purpose, this kind of like free forming design style. You can see some of those different examples that I've done there, but this is why I use Figma to have that free form that now is available inside of Framer. But the cool thing with this, and the reason why Framer even decided to do this is because Figma recently came out with Figma sites. Now I did a video on this a couple of weeks ago when they announced it. So take a look at that video if you haven't already, because that's gonna give a lot of context to this whole war that's going on. So that was cool because you could design something inside of Figma as we would here with auto layout, for example, we can select these two, we can add in auto layout, and now we have sort of a design. But the thing with Figma is that we would never actually be able to launch it to the real world. We could have a, a prototype like this, we could kind of fake it as a website, but it was never a real website until they added this feature here, which you can right click on the frame and then go to copy to Figma sites, and it's gonna add in a new Figma sites project for you. It's gonna copy the frames over, and now we have an actual live website. If we want to, we can then publish this to the real world. And then this is going to be an actual live website that can rank, that can do all the things that need to happen. So when this happened, when this Figma sites thing happened, I believe that the Figma and Framer line got a little bit blurred. So in my opinion, Framer decided to go even further and say, okay, well, we're gonna add in the freeform canvas that we've got going on here. So now these two are very similar and now we can go here and say, okay, let's create a web page from this. And now, I mean, it's the exact same thing. We can publish and now we have a real life website from this and we can create different breakpoints. And yeah, just have, just have, this is literally a website. Now we can go here, click it. And this is literally online forever. So how can we distinguish when to use both of these? Should we even use both of these? These are the answers that I'm gonna be answering very soon. So in my opinion, Figma is becoming a little bit bloated. This is the community here. And if we just see what's available, we see that we've got design resources. So wireframes all the way to illustrations. We've got Figma Make now, which allows you to do a kind of like um, AI to, to create components and stuff. Plugins, of course, presentations, whiteboarding and now websites. So we can do all these different websites. So in my opinion, if you're just a designer, this feels a little bit bloated. Whereas in my opinion, Framer still feels like a pure design tool for, for freelancers, for like, I don't know, people like me, people like you, I'm assuming. Figma feels more like they're just trying to become kind of like an Adobe for all the design tools in the world. Let me know what you guys think in the comments because obviously everybody's opinion matters here. Uh, there's an a right opinion, but you can see that this is just websites for now. Yeah, there isn't this Figma make situation going on where you can create animations and all that. I mean, maybe Framer decides to do that later on in the future, but I don't know, do you need this, this fortune cookie thing as a designer? Maybe not, maybe you do. Maybe you wanna add that kind of uh, feature. We also, of course, have plugins. It is bloated in its own way, Framer. If you can call this bloat, these are important things that you 
you need, like for example, Rive, like Search Console, Google Sheets, all these things. I've covered all of these and they're all great. So in my opinion, where do you use what and how can you kind of distinguish them? So Figma still has a massive, massive library of design systems and components that Framer does not have. Framer is a little bit weaker in this, but if you are a solo designer, just working with a couple projects here and there as a freelancer, how much does that really matter? Well, it matters for the next reason. The next reason is the output quality. So here we've got the same exact thing. We have the Framer site on the left and then the Figma site on the right. We can see this is dot framer app and then dot figma site so they're both very similar when it comes to the actual kind of the visual that you can do right but a lot of people on twitter especially were complaining when figma sites came out over the how much of a chaos the actual classes were when you launch something framer is a little bit better with that when it comes to organizing your actual website. Now, remember that Figma is juggling 30,000 different things from presentations to the make thing, to their whiteboard, to the actual Figma sites thing. Whereas Framer really is just managing the websites. This new design thing that they've added here is just kind of like a small extension from the pages. It's not necessarily that much different. They're not adding, I don't know, 6,000 other features. So the actual code that's gonna come out of Framer is gonna be a lot more purposeful than Figma. That matters for a few different reasons. Number one is gonna be speed. Now I'm actually curious what's gonna happen if we do a lighthouse report on both of these. They're both pretty blank sites, obviously. They just have a smiley face, but let's see what it says in terms of the actual structuring. That is gonna be super interesting. So we got a couple of errors here from the Framer side, which is interesting, probably because number one, I'm on arc. So it's going to try to block a couple of things, but that's quite interesting because it goes against what I'm saying. So that's always good. But other than that, we can see that accessibility and SEO are going to be good. I don't know how uh, reliable these are going to be, of course, because there isn't really anything there. But anyways, you can tell that the actual output is going to be quite similar, but the bloat is going to be real with Figma sites. Of course, it has to be. So in my opinion, the verdict is the Figma sites is not necessarily ready if you want to take on a bunch of clients and have it be your mule to create this business. You still need to use something like Framer or Webflow, Squarespace, WordPress, whatever. Figma sites is not necessarily ready in my opinion. Design pages is kind of a, a battle component for just Figma in general. The reason being, if you're just a regular designer, you don't need to go from Figma to Framer. You can just design in Framer directly. If you're not juggling a thousand different plugins and design systems and working with massive companies. Framer is totally fine as a designer, as a freelancer, and I recommend it. At the end of the day, it depends on your clients as well, because if your client just wants to design inside of Figma, because Figma is the standard. So if they already have a massive file in there, you're not gonna be like, oh, let's go into Framer. That's not gonna happen. But it's always good to start in something that you can just use that one tool instead of kind of multitasking between both. Either way, I've created a freebie for you guys that goes into way more detail that I can do on this video. So if you guys want to check it out, it's in the description. Let me know what you guys think. And if you haven't seen my Figma Sites video, go watch it over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.